The Munch Bunch have run away. The Munch Bunch are here to stay. The Munch Bunch have found a home with a garden. The Munch Bunch have settled down. The Munch Bunch way out of town. The Munch Bunch have all the things. The greengrocer's shop closes at the end of the day, and all is quiet. But listen, did you hear that? <laughs> it's coming from the pile of fruit and vegetables which have been swept into a corner. They're coming to life. <laughs> Why have we been left here like this? sobs Ollie Onion. Pete Pepper jumps up. Because we're not good enough, that's why, he snaps. Being a pepper, he's always very hot-tempered. The rest of the pile have come to life now and are very indignant at the thought of not being good enough. I'm jolly well going to get out of here, the potato tells everyone. I'm going back to the fields and the sunshine. Ooh, the lovely sun, sighs Lizzie Leek. Everyone wants to go with Spud. Very well. Let's all have a good night's sleep and start out very early tomorrow before anyone is up, because we mustn't be seen. At Cockrow the next morning, Spud leads the Munch Bunch through the shop to the cat flap in the front door. One by one, they scramble out to freedom. They cross the road carefully at the zebra crossing. Little Olive is so excited she nearly gets left behind. Spud leads them through a gap in the hedge on the other side of the road into a lovely green field. They walk and walk, talking about the sort of places they'd like to live in. Suddenly they all stop in their tracks. In front of them is a garden shed, but strange noises are coming from it. Let's take a look inside, says Spud bravely, and finding a small hole in the side, he goes through. Timidly, the others follow, only to find the two naughty berries, Billy Blackberry and Scruff Gooseberry, having great fun seesawing on a plank in the middle of a lot of dirty rubbish. This is what was making the strange noises. I might have guessed it would be you two, declares Spud, looking round at the mess. Isn't it lovely? We could live here, says Scruff. Out of the question, Professor Peabody tells them. All the others are disgusted at the thought too, and persuade Billy and Scruff to come outside. They're all very tired now. My legs are only little and they're worn out. I'm not moving another step, so there, lisps Olive. Meanwhile, Billy and Scruff have been looking around outside. Gaw, we could live in a old box, Billy. The old flower pots, watering cans and sacks suddenly hold great possibilities as homes for the Munch Bunch. They clean and polish, make windows and doors and neat garden paths. It has been a long day of adventures, but you may be sure there are many more to come. Pedro Orange is one of the Munch Bunch. He lives in a Wellington boot next door to the Banana Bunch. Pedro comes from Spain, where it's always very hot. His favourite hobby is strumming his guitar in the sunshine and singing Spanish songs. It had been raining for days and days in the Munch Bunch village, and Pedro was feeling very miserable. I've had enough of all this rain, he said. I'm going home to Spain. I'm fed up with all this English weather. So Pedro packed his suntan lotion and sunglasses into his satchel, and he put some biscuits and fizzy pop into a big handkerchief. Then he set off for the airport. Pedro soon found an aeroplane which was going to Spain. Nobody saw him, and anyway, who would think that an orange sitting on an aeroplane was really a stowaway? I'll soon be home, thought Pedro happily. 
and everyone will be so pleased to see me. Pedro's family was very pleased to see him. Oh, Mama, I've missed you all so much. I've missed the lovely Spanish sunshine. It's fantastic to be on. I must write to all my friends in England, said Pedro to his mummy. They'll be wondering where I am. I left in such a hurry, I forgot to leave them a note. So Pedro's mummy helped him to write a postcard to the Munch Bunch. Having a lovely time, wish you were here, love from Pedro. Then Pedro and his family sat down to a real Spanish lunch cooked by Pedro's mummy. And because they were so pleased to see him, they gave Pedro an extra large helping of food. And afterwards, Pedro went to see his aunties and uncles. They had lots to talk about. The days of Pedro's holiday went by very quickly. One day he was sitting in the garden playing his guitar when he dozed off. His own songs had sent him to sleep. Pedro started to dream of his munch-bunch friends. At first he dreamt that he was dancing with his best friend Lucy Lemon. She was dancing just like a Spanish lady. Then Pedro dreamt that he was a champion bullfighter. All the munch-bunch were there cheering him on. Pedro felt so proud. Then Pedro's dream changed again. This time he and some of his munch-bunch friends were sunbathing on the beach. He dreamt that everyone had joined him on holiday. And later they all had a barbecue on the beach. It was such fun. What a lovely dream he was having. Suddenly Pedro's dream was brought to an end. Wake up, Pedro, he heard his mummy say. It's almost time for you to go to catch your aeroplane. So Pedro packed his bag, then he kissed all his family goodbye. Goodbye, Mama. Goodbye, Papa. Goodbye, little brother and sister. I see you all again soon. Goodbye, Pedro, said his mummy. Bring some of your friends with you next time you come. There was a big welcome waiting for Pedro when he got back to the Munch Bunch village. Lucy gave him a great big kiss. Where have you been? she asked. We've been worried about you. You forgot to say on your card where you were. I've been home to see my mamma and my papa, and I've had a lovely holiday, said Pedro. Next time you're all invited to come with me. Pedro was very pleased to be back once again in the Munch Bunch village, and he was very pleased to see that it had stopped raining at last. <laughs> see our castle built it out of sand come and see our castle built it all by hand here's the bucket and the spade now it's time to play here's the water and the sand lots of fun all day come and see our castle built it out of sand come and see our castle
Casper Carrot is one of the Munch Bunch. He lives in an old sack near Spud and Tom Tomato. Casper worries all the time. There is never a moment, day or night, when he stops worrying. One night Casper could not sleep. He had a very big decision to make. Ollie Onion and Pete Pepper had asked him to go fishing with them, and Billy Blackberry and Scruff Gooseberry had asked him to go to the seaside with them. Poor Casper, he couldn't decide what to do. He was a very worried carrot. So first thing the next morning he went for a walk to help him make up his mind. If I go to the seaside, Pete will be cross with me, and Ollie will cry. And if I go fishing by the river, Billy and Scruff might swim out too far, or even be eaten by sea monsters. Oh dear, what shall I do? Worried Casper. Button and Tiny Mushroom were busy spring cleaning. They were taking their furniture into the garden so they could scrub and polish the house all over. What are you doing? Asked Casper anxiously. You shouldn't be lifting that heavy furniture. You might hurt yourselves. And what if it rains and spoils your settee? But before they had time to answer, Casper had hurried away. Casper was still worrying about his big decision when he came to Pippa Pear's house. But he soon had something else to worry about. Through the window, he could see Pippa dishing up an enormous helping of jam pudding for Adam Avocado. What you don't burn your mouth on that hot jam? Yelled Casper. But he didn't wait for a reply. He had other things on his mind. Casper had only walked a little way further when he saw Corny on the cob mowing his lawn. Be careful with that lawn mower, Corny. It might get out of control and run away with you, or it might even cut you. Corny was very puzzled. But before he could ask Casper what all the fuss was about, Casper had hurried away. Casper was still worrying about his big decision: should he go to the seaside or should he go fishing? Then he saw Bounce the Spring Onion doing some weightlifting. Why are you doing that? Asked Casper. It's a very dangerous hobby for someone as small as you. But Bounce was lifting such a heavy weight that he couldn't answer, and Casper didn't have time to wait around. Suddenly, Casper was being attacked. He was drenched by a stream of cold water. Keep off my property, old timer! Drawled a voice from behind a tree. It was Peanut pretending he was a cowboy again and firing at Casper with his water pistol. Don't do that! Shouted Casper. I'm soaking wet, and I might catch a cold. Then I wouldn't be able to go to the seaside or go fishing either. Casper marched away, muttering to himself. He was now a very worried, angry carrot. But Casper soon forgot his bad temper and found something else to worry about. He saw Supercool the cucumber and Susie Celery high up in a tree, standing on some very wobbly pieces of wood. Hello, Casper. We're building a tree house," called down Supercool. Casper was horrified. It doesn't look safe to me. One puff of wind would knock it down, and you both land on your heads. Just as Casper finished speaking, there was a loud creaking and groaning noise, and the wobbly tree house crashed to the ground. There, I told you so," said Casper, rushing to help them. Casper patched up their bruises and bandaged their sore arms and legs. "I have good reason to worry about you too," he said. "Fancy calling that contraption a tree house." You should ask Professor Peabody to draw up a plan for you. Then Casper realised it was getting late, and he still hadn't made his big decision. So Casper went home and started to get ready for his outing. He searched in his cupboard and found his fishing rod and nets just in case he went fishing, and he found his swimming trunks and rubber ring in case he went to the seaside. Then Casper sat in his armchair for a little rest. He felt very tired after all his worrying. I'll decide in a minute," he said to himself. But he soon fell asleep, dreaming about his big decision. While Casper was asleep, the others met on his doorstep. "Why don't we all go out together?" suggested Billy Blackberry. "What a good idea!" said Pete Pepper. "We can fish in the sea. What do you think, Ollie?" But before Ollie could answer, Casper opened his door. "Oh no!" Now what am I going to do? He said. Don't worry, Casper. 
We've all decided to go out together, said Ollie. So I haven't got anything to decide after all, said Casper. They all had a lovely afternoon at the seaside. Billy and Scruff played in the shallow water with their beach ball. Pete was quite happy fishing in the sea, and Ollie decided that he would rather play sandcastles. And Casper? He sat in his deck chair, keeping a watchful eye on everybody through his binoculars. So really, Casper had nothing to worry about at all, did he? is one of the Munch Bunch. She lives in the downstairs flat of an old chest of drawers. Her friend Lucy Lemon lives upstairs. Emma is a very pretty apple. She's also a very vain apple. And she thinks about how pretty she is all the time. One day, Emma was looking at herself in the mirror, as usual. But she was very unhappy with what she saw. She thought her skin looked very dull and her leaf very limp. Emma had been asked to talk about beauty care at the Munch Bunch Health and Beauty Club that very evening, and all the girls would be there. How can I go looking like this? I'll never be pretty again, she cried. So she went to see Professor Peabody. Please help me, she said. Look in your books and find a way to make me beautiful again. Peabody was a bit surprised, but he said he would try to help Emma as she was so upset. He searched and searched, but he couldn't find a suitable remedy anywhere. I've got a book in my attic which might help you, he said. I'll bring it to your house when I find it. But unknown to Emma and Peabody, there were three little faces pressing against the window. It was Billy Blackberry, Scruff Gooseberry and Susie Celery and they were being naughty again. They decided to play a trick on Emma. They went to the river and, giggling to themselves, filled some buckets with mud. Then Susie and Scruff hid in the bushes while Billy knocked on Emma's door. Peabody has sent me with this special treatment to make your skin shine. He says you've got to bath in it, said Billy, trying hard to keep a straight face. Oh, thank you, dear. You are a kind blackberry, said Emma. A little while later, Lucy Lemon called at Emma's flat. It was almost time for them to go to the Health and Beauty Club meeting. But she had quite a shock. To her horror, she saw Emma sitting in a bath full of mud. What on earth are you doing? Quick, get out of that bath, Emma, Lucy shrieked. It's all a trick. A moment ago, I heard Billy and his friends giggling about you. And now I know why. Emma was furious. She jumped out of the bath. You wait till I catch them. Billy Blackberry told me that Peabody had sent me the mud. It was supposed to be a beauty treatment, she shouted angrily. This horrid mud will make me look even worse. And then she burst into tears. Meanwhile, Professor Peabody had at last found the beauty treatment for Emma, and he brought it to show her. Lucy answered the door. Emma's a bit upset, she whispered. Peabody could see a very tearful Emma Apple standing in the middle of the room, dripping with mud. Professor Peabody was amazed. Mm, however, did you guess that you should bath in mud? That's what my book of special skin-shining remedies recommends, he said. You are a clever little apple. 
Emma couldn't believe it. But when she peeped in the book, she saw it was true. And she soon started to cheer up again. If I hurry up, I might still be in time to give my talk at the club, she said. They quickly washed and polished Emma. Her skin soon became very clean and shiny. Emma was very pleased. That's better, she said. But I do think that Billy, Thuthy and Scruff should be punished for this. We'll make them clear up the mess, laughed Lucy. The culprits were rounded up and told to clean up all the mess. At first they pretended to hate every minute of their punishment. But once they thought Peabody was out of the way, they had a lovely time splashing about in the mud. Billy Blackberry said, Caw, this is the best trick we've ever thought of. Even the punishment's a good laugh. But Peabody was waiting until they'd finished the clearing up. Oh dear, the mud has made you all very dirty. I know just what you need, he said. And he made them get into a bath full of hot, soapy water. That made Susie, Billy and Scruff very unhappy. Now this is what I call punishment, muttered Scruff. Emma felt that she really looked pretty as she advised the others about beauty treatments. They were especially impressed by her new invention, which she called Emma's Mud Bath, a special treatment for dry skin. But Emma had to rely on Lucy to keep quiet about the true story. Wally Walnut is one of the Munch Bunch. He lives in an old birdcage close to his best friend, Peanut. He is easily the noisiest member of the Munch Bunch, and his big loud voice is always getting him into trouble. One morning, Wally decided to take a bath. First, he filled the tub with hot water. Next, he added his new bubble bath. Then, he hopped in. Wally felt so happy that he started to sing his favourite song. Professor Peabody, who lives a long way from Wally, was reading his new book. It was all about burglar alarms. But the noise was so loud that he had to stop reading. Hmm, perhaps Tom Tomato has invented a new type of burglar alarm. It doesn't sound quite right, though, Peabody thought to himself. The Banana Bunch were practising for a concert. They could hear the noise that Wally was making too, 
but they tried to ignore it. But in the end, they had to give up. Sounds like someone's got a bad tummy ache, said Skippy. Tom Tomato was busy helping Corny on the cob to water his seeds, until they heard the noise. What on earth can that row be? said Corny. It sounds like Spud's car, replied Tom. I hope the engine hasn't gone wrong again. Sally Strawberry had invited Lucy Lemon in for a cup of tea, but suddenly their china cup shattered to pieces as Wally burst into song. Whatever will we have to put up with next? said Sally. Soon a crowd had gathered outside Wally's house. What on earth is it? stormed Pete Pepper. It sounds like a monster from outer space, said Ollie Onion, bursting into tears. Meanwhile, Wally had finished bathing and decided it would be a good idea to go for a walk. He opened his front door, and guess what he saw? A big crowd of the Munch Bunch stood in his front garden. They were all wondering what could be making such a terrible noise. Hello, everybody! Wally boomed. Lovely day, isn't it? I've just had a long soak in my new bubble bath. And he marched off towards the river, whistling another noisy tune. The others were amazed. It was him all the time, gasped Lucy Lemon. Really, he didn't even know he was disturbing us, said Sally Strawberry. Some nuts have no idea at all. <laughs> He's a blooming nutcase, said Corny. <laughs> T Tom, do you get the joke? But Tom didn't feel like laughing. While all this was going on, Emma had decided to go for a walk. She wanted to find a place to sunbathe by the river. But instead of looking where she was going, Emma was admiring her reflection in the water as she walked. Oh, what a lovely colour I am, she said to herself. She was so busy admiring herself that she did not see someone had left a bag on the path in front of her. Just at that moment, Wally came along. Look out, Emma! he bellowed. But it was too late. She tripped on the bag and toppled head first into the river. Help! Help! I can't swim! Emma cried. Neither can I, said Wally. But don't worry, I'll soon get someone here to help you. And at the top of his voice he boomed, Help! Somebody help us! Quickly! Help! Spud and Tom heard Wally shout for help and came running along to see what was going on. Spud is a very good swimmer. He used to be a lifeguard at the seaside. So he jumped into the deep water to rescue a very frightened Emma. And Wally and Tom helped by fishing the bags out of the shallow water. Oh, thank you, Wally. You saved my life, said Emma, as she stood dripping on the river bank. Yes, your loud voice is useful sometimes after all, said Spud. Do you know, said Wally, I never realised I could shout so loudly before. I have got quite a strong voice, haven't I? Yes, Wally. You certainly have, the three of them shouted together. And for once, there was silence from Wally. in the mud We don't mind the weather Choose it if we could Laughing at the rain clouds Floating in the sky Soon the sun is shining When the clouds pass by Swing your body In the air Touch the raindrops As they fall When your body Is in the air You just won't get Wet at all Wait before the rainbow, soon it will appear. Watch it 
coming higher Sunny days are near Laughing at the rain clouds Floating in the sky Soon the sun is shining When the clouds pass by Gooseberry is one of the Munch Bunch. He lives in an old wooden box with his best friend Billy Blackberry. Scruff is a very scruffy gooseberry, and because he hates washing, he's a very grubby gooseberry. On top of that, Scruff is also a very naughty gooseberry. One day, Scruff and Billy were out looking for mischief, as usual. They saw Spud talking to Sally Strawberry. He was asking Sally if she would like a lift to the fair in his car. I wish I had my own car, sighed Scruff. Any old car would do for me. We could have ever so much fun in it. Oh, never mind about that. Let's do some exploring, said Billy. It's too early to go to the fair yet. Come on, I'll race you. So they went to explore a corner of the garden shed where none of the Munch Bunch had ever been before. It was so dark and dirty that even the spiders didn't like living there anymore. But Scruff soon found lots and lots of dirty old treasures so he liked it there very much. Suddenly, Scruff stubbed his toe on something very hard. Ouch! This old heap of rust has just trodden on my toe, he said, hopping about on one leg. So they started to clear all the things away to see what it was. They tugged and tugged until they freed the mysterious object. It's an old jeep, said Scruff. Come on, Billy, let's push it home and get to work on it. Yuck, what do you want that for? asked Billy in disgust. But just the same, he helped Scruff push the jeep home. They found it a bit difficult to steer and push at the same time, which upset Corny on the cob. He was very annoyed when they accidentally ran over some of his flowers on the way. After a while, they got the jeep home without causing too much trouble. We need to put some extra bits on it to make it look really good, said Scruff. You look after the jeep, Billy, while I go see what I can find. We'll be going to the fair in style. Just you wait and see. So Scruff took his wheelbarrow and set off to collect the things he wanted for his jeep. Tom Tomato and Pete Pepper had just put their dustbins out, ready for the rubbish to be collected. Those dustbin lids would make pretty good upcaps for my car, said Scruff. Well, you can't have them, said Pete angrily. But before they knew what was happening, Scruff had quickly put the lids on his wheelbarrow and hurried away. I'll bring them back tomorrow, he called. Then Scruff saw Casper Carrot. Can I borrow your hot water bottle, please, Casper? he asked. I need it to make the windscreen washers work on my new car. All right, Scruff, but be careful. Cars can be very dangerous, especially homemade ones, said Casper. Don't worry, you'll like my jeep when you've had a ride in it, laughed Scruff. Just then, Scruff noticed the sparkling new lamps which Ollie Onion had recently put up either side of his door. They'd make good headlights, he thought, so Scruff decided to borrow them. But when Ollie came out and saw Scruff taking his lamps, he was very upset. Don't cry, I'll bring them back tomorrow, said Scruff. Next, Scruff needed a wing mirror, and he knew that Emma Apple had lots of mirrors. So he peeped through Emma's open door to see if the coast was clear. And when he saw she was standing on her head practicing yoga, he quickly grabbed the nearest mirror and ran away. Emma didn't even see what had happened. Now all I need is a door for the driver's side, said Scruff to himself. One of Corny's garden gates would do. He won't mind if I just borrow one for a while. But Corny did mind. Come back with that gate, Scruff Gooseberry. I'm fed up with you and your old banger, he roared. First you run over my flowers and now you take my gate. Scruff didn't waste any time getting away from there. 
Scruff wheeled his collection of valuable treasures home. And then he and Billy set to work. They wanted to have the jeep working properly in time to go to the fair that afternoon. At last it was time to go to the fair. Some of the Munch Bunch had met, hoping to go to the fair in Spud's car, but only half of them had managed to squeeze in. The rest stood there, feeling very upset. Then they heard a very funny noise. Pop, pop, bang, bang, pop! And then round the corner drove Scruff and Billy in their battered old jeep. Would anyone like a lift to the fairground? asked Scruff with a grin. Yes, please, replied Emma. Well, up in then, said Scruff, and we can all go together. Hooray! they all chorused, and they sang all the way to the fair. They'd forgotten all about Scruff being naughty and borrowing their things without their permission, and even Corny forgave him for running over his flowers. When the fair was over, Scruff drove them safely home, and they all agreed that the best ride in the afternoon was in Scruff's car. <laughs> We should to have some fun round here, all right. So don't be shy, don't hang around, don't sit at home. You're welcome here, no need to be all on your own. Take your partner, swing around, lift that girl right off the ground. Lemon is one of the Munch Bunch. She lives in the upstairs flat of an old chest of drawers. Her friend Emma Apple lives downstairs. The Munch Bunch enjoy teasing and playing tricks on Lucy because she never realises when they're joking. She really is a lemon. One morning when Lucy woke up, she saw that it had been snowing very heavily during the night. Hooray! she said and hurried outside to play. Super Cool the Cucumber and Susie Celery were pinning up a big notice, so Lucy stopped to have a look at it. The Great Munch Munch Sledge Race, she read out loud. Why don't you have a go, Lucy? It's not difficult to make a fast sledge, joked Super Cool. All you need is a comfortable chair. <laughs> and don't forget the mud guards to keep the snow off you, <laughs> giggled Susie. Lucy had no idea that she was being teased. So she decided to make her own sledge and enter the race. Lucy went to see Scruff Gooseberry. She thought he might have some mud guards to spare. How would you make a sledge go really fast? asked Lucy. With go fast as striped paint, of course, said Scruff, just for a joke. Go and see Sally Strawberry. She'll have some for you. Poor Lucy Lemon still didn't realise she was being teased. So she went to ask Sally if she had any go faster striped paint. Sally could hardly keep a straight face, she wanted to laugh so much. I'm so sorry, Lucy, I run out of striped paint. But you can put the stripes on with this paint. It'll be just as good. My main problem now is how to steer it, 
said Lucy. With a steering wheel, of course, said Sally. Bounce is always making things. He'll find you one. Bounce had some wheels left over from when he'd made a trolley to carry his toys in, so he gave Lucy one of those. He realised that the others were teasing Lucy, so he thought he'd join in too. Don't forget you'll need some brakes to stop you at the end of the race. And as you'll probably be going very fast, <laughs> I think a parachute would be just the thing. What a good idea, said Lucy. So Lucy went straight to Lizzie Leake's house to ask her if she had any parachute material to spare. Lizzie was quite surprised at Lucy's request, but as she's used to Lucy asking some funny questions, she gave her the material without saying a word. What are we going to do with her? said Lizzie to herself. On her way home, she saw Corny on the cob. What have you got there, Lucy? he asked. I'm making a sledge for the big race this afternoon, said Lucy. Well, don't forget the rubber hammer. Everyone has at least one of those on a really fast sledge, <laughs> he joked. And you'll need a spot of elbow grease on those mud guards. Then she met Casper Carrot, who was always worrying about something or other. At first, he was worrying about the huge snowball which Supercool had just thrown at Susie Celery. But when he saw Lucy staggering along with her heavy load, he started to worry about her instead. Let me help you, Lucy, he said. And on the way, she told him all about the wonderful sledge she was going to make. You will be wearing a safety harness, won't you? asked Casper anxiously. As soon as Lucy got home, she put all the things she'd collected on the floor and set to work. First of all, she painted the chair with go faster stripes. Then she polished the mud guards until they shone like glass. I couldn't find any of that elbow grease Corny told me about. I do hope polish will do instead, she said to herself. At last, Lucy had finished. She pulled her sledge onto the front lawn and stood in the snow admiring it. She thought her new sledge was magnificent. Lucy felt very proud as she pulled the sledge to the race. When the others saw her, they just couldn't help laughing. They were all very pleased with their joke. What a lemon that young Lucy is, said Corny, and his sides were shaking with laughter. It was time for the race to begin. All the competitors lined up, trying to concentrate on the difficult course ahead. But instead, most of them were laughing at the sight of Lucy, sitting back comfortably on her homemade sledge. At last, they were off. Lucy zoomed into the lead. Susie Celery was so amazed, she forgot to look where she was going. She ran headlong into Scruff Gooseberry. Crash! They both collided with Wally Walnut and Tom Tomato. Lucy raced to the winning line, way ahead of the others. As she neared the end of the course, Lucy pulled on the brakes and the parachute unfolded. The sledge stopped very sedately in front of the line of spectators. Lucy was the winner. Lucy was the happiest lemon in the world as Pedro presented her with the winner's trophy. And just at that moment, Supercool whizzed past. Although he'd managed to stay in the race, he didn't have any brakes to help him stop. Silly cucumber. That day, Lucy Lemon certainly had the last laugh. Dance the whole night through Banana rock, 
Super Cool is one of the Munch Bunch. He is a very cool cucumber who lives in a very cool flower pot. Super Cool always wears his very cool hat and his very cool sneakers. One day Super Cool was reading about a new sport called skateboarding. It looked great fun. So he decided to make himself a skateboard. He collected some old pieces of wood from the garden and nailed them together just like the pictures in his book. All he needed now were some wheels. I know just the place, he thought to himself. So he took the wheels off his bed. Supercool's skateboard was ready for its first run. He decided to try it out on the steepest hill he could find. He passed Button and Tiny the mushrooms on his way up the hill. What's that thing under your arm? asked Tiny. It's a skateboard, replied Supercool. The mushrooms looked puzzled at Supercool's reply. Supercool reached the top of the hill. He didn't know that he should wear a helmet and some knee pads. He looked down the hill and saw some of the Munch Bunch playing. There was Lizzie Leek and Tom Tomato, Sally Strawberry and Ollie Onion and Billy Blackberry and Scruff Gooseberry. Supercool got on his skateboard and started to go down the hill. Wee! he cried. This is great. The board ran faster and faster and faster, so fast that Supercool could not control it any more. He could see Lizzie Leek and Tom Tomato getting closer and closer. Look out! he cried. Too late! Supercool knocked them both over, and Lizzie Leek's knitting got caught on the front of the skateboard. Sally Strawberry was next. Crash! Her brushes and paints flew into the air. Sorry, yelled Supercool. No brakes! And he raced on, totally out of control. Faster and faster and faster he went. Scruff Gooseberry saw him coming and jumped out of the way, but poor Billy Blackberry didn't move quickly enough. Crash! He ended up with the wool from Lizzie Leek's knitting tied round his legs. Still, Supercool raced on. Then, disaster. Supercool crashed into Ollie Onion, who had been cycling up the hill. Poor Ollie Onion burst into tears. Supercool's skateboard had not been built for such rough treatment. Crack! It broke in half. Supercool's feet left the skateboard and he found himself flying through the air, right into a bush, head first, with only his feet left sticking out. The Munch Bunch pulled him out of the bush. They were very angry. Lizzie Leek's knitting was ruined, Sally Strawberry's paintbrushes had fallen in the mud, Billy Blackberry was covered in bruises, and Ollie Onion was still crying. Supercool was very upset. He hadn't read the part in his book which showed him how to steer and stop a skateboard, and now his skateboard had broken into pieces. But Lizzie Leek gave him a parcel. Here is a present for your birthday tomorrow, she said. Super, cried Supercool. 
a brand new skateboard, a helmet, gloves, oh, and some elbow and knee pads. Now I'll be able to skate safely. The Munch Bunch laughed. Well, let's hope we will be safe too, said Lizzie Lee. Come to school, it's fun. It isn't smart to be dumb. Come to school, it's fun. Fun for everyone. Learn to say the alphabet. Count from one to ten. Learn the way to spell your name. How to use a pen. A for apple, B for book. C A T spells cat. D for dog and E for egg. Did you all know that? Two times two adds up to four. One and one is two. When you learn your lesson well, turn to something new. Come to school, it's fun. It isn't smart to be dumb. Come to school, it's fun. Fun for everyone. Ollie Onion is one of the Munch Bunch. He lives in an old shopping bag. Ollie often cries a lot, but today he was very happy because he'd just been given a brand new bicycle for his birthday. Ollie's best friend, Bounce, the Spring Onion, had given him a fishing rod for his birthday. So Ollie decided to go fishing in the afternoon. He packed a bottle of pop and some sandwiches and set off on his new bicycle. When Ollie arrived at the lake, he got off his bicycle and leant it against an old tree stump. Soon Ollie was ready to start fishing. He cast his line into the lake and rested his rod on a forked twig. He got out his sandwiches and settled down to enjoy a good day's fishing. Just then, Billy Blackberry and Scruff Gooseberry came running down the path. What are you doing, Ollie? They asked. I am fishing, said Ollie. Can we have a go? asked Scruff. Ollie thought for a while. He knew Billy and Scruff were always playing tricks. Ah,、uh, all right, Ollie decided. But you must do as I say. Ollie reeled in his line to show Billy and Scruff the brightly coloured float which was tied onto it. First of all, you have to bait the line with a small piece of dough, explained Ollie. Then you swing the line right out into the lake like this. The line shot high into the sky and landed with a splash in the middle of the lake. There, anyone can do it," said Ollie. "Now we must wait until the fish swallows the ball of dough." The three of them watched for a little while. Then Ollie Onion asked Billy if he would like to try. Billy Blackberry grabbed the line and tried to copy Ollie. Poor Billy was all fingers and thumbs. He caught the line round the reel and got himself into a dreadful mess. Ollie and Scruff couldn't stop laughing, but poor Billy grew very annoyed. At last, he was ready to cast his line. He drew Ollie's brand new fishing rod over his shoulder and gave a mighty tug. Disaster! The hook got caught in the spokes of Ollie's brand new bicycle wheel. Ollie's bicycle flew over their heads and landed with a huge splash in the lake. Ollie Onion. Burst into tears. His brand new shining bicycle had disappeared. I'm very sorry," said Billy. "But don't worry, Scruff and I will get your bicycle back. It will be ruined," cried Ollie. Billy and Scruff pulled on the fishing line until Ollie's bicycle emerged from the water. It looked dreadful. It was covered in mud and green weed. Poor Ollie. He was too upset to watch. I want to go home," he wailed. The three of them trudged home without talking. Ollie cried all the way home. Scruff carried all the fishing tackle, and Billy wheeled the bicycle. When they reached Ollie's house, Ollie went inside and slumped down in his armchair. Billy and Scruff started to clean Ollie's bicycle. They washed off the mud and the weeds. Then they polished and rubbed and rubbed and polished until Ollie's bicycle gleamed and sparkled like new again. They were very proud of their efforts and went into Ollie's house to tell him the good news. Ollie could hardly believe his eyes. 
Oh, thank you, said Ollie. My bicycle looks brand new again. We've got a special surprise for you, said Billy. Look, we found a fish in your saddlebag. They all burst out laughing. Ollie decided that Billy and Scruff were not so nasty after all. That night they cooked the best fish supper they'd ever tasted. Ollie went to bed that night a very happy onion. Ship ahoy, ship ahoy We'll cross the seven seas Ship ahoy, ship ahoy Pippa Pear is one of the Munch Bunch. She lives in a lantern next door to her best friend, Adam Avocado. Pippa is a very greedy pear. She eats and eats and eats and eats. This morning, for breakfast, she started with a big bowl of porridge. Then she had a plate full of sausages and eggs. And to finish with, she was looking forward to lots of toast and honey and at least five cups of tea. After she'd finished her big breakfast, Pippa worried in case she was getting slightly fat. But she soon forgot about that when she thought of the big cream cake she'd made for Elevenses. Just to fill in the time before her next feed, Pippa went to see her friend Emma Apple. On the way, she saw Professor Peabody. He was cleaning something, which looked very odd to Pippa. Look at these, Pippa, Peabody said. They're genuine kitchen scales. You weigh things on them. Hop on, and we'll try them out. So Pippa jumped onto one side of the scales, and Peabody put the weights on the other side. Mmm, that's good, Pippa. You weigh exactly the same as eleven buttons and two matchboxes. Hey, what? cried Pippa. That's terrible! Oh, promise you'll keep it a secret. Please don't tell any of the others. Then she jumped off the scales and hurried away to see Emma Apple. Emma, Emma, you must help me. I've got to go on a diet. I'm far too heavy, cried Pippa. Emma was so surprised she dropped the vase of flowers she was dusting. Come with me, dear. We'll discuss it outside over a nice glass of water, said Emma. Pippa kept very still while Emma measured all round her waist. Mmm, I can see why you're worried. But if you stick to this diet and do exercises with me every day, you'll soon lose that extra weight. You will remember it's top secret, won't you? said Pippa. But unknown to Emma and Pippa, Lucy Lemon had overheard their conversation, and she was looking forward to telling Susie Celery all about it. Pippa and Emma met the next day and did their exercises together. They worked very hard for over an hour, touching their toes and doing high kicks. Afterwards they were very tired, and Pippa was very hungry. Suddenly Susie Celery popped up from nowhere. She was carrying a tray full of fizzy drinks and chocolate buns. <laughs> Help yourselves, girls, she said gleefully. But Emma gave Susie a big glare, and she gave Pippa a dig in the side. Oh, no thank you, said Pippa very weakly. The next day, some of the Munch Bunch decided to go to the lake for a swim. They were all going in Spud's car, except for Pippa. She asked Ollie Onion if she could borrow his bicycle. It's such a lovely day for a bike ride, she said, and much to the amazement of the others, she cycled all the way there. They were even more amazed when Pippa jumped straight in the lake as soon as she arrived. The others were all sunbathing and relaxing. 
but Pippa was determined to swim at least twice across the lake before she stopped for a rest. And while Pippa was busy swimming, Lucy and Susie told the others about Pippa's diet. A little while later, Pippa flopped onto the side of the lake, exhausted. The others crowded round. They offered her hot dogs, sandwiches, cakes, bags of sweets and fizzy drinks. But Pippa accepted only one tiny sandwich and a glass of water. She was very miserable at having to refuse such lovely food. The next day, Susie and Lucy called at Pippa's house. They discovered her doing her exercises once again. <laughs> Are you coming with us to Sally Strawberry's tea party? asked Susie. <laughs> There's sure to be <laughs> chocolate cake, cream meringues and... All right, I'll be there as soon as I've been jogging, said Pippa quickly. Pippa went to Sally's tea party, still wearing her tracksuit and feeling very weary after her run. Sally offered Pippa a plate full of jam tarts. No, thank you, Sally. A dry biscuit would be very nice. I'm not very hungry today, said Pippa, sighing to herself. And even when they offered her iced buns, tea cakes and fizzy drinks, Pippa still refused everything. She was determined to stick to her diet. It was two weeks since Pippa had started her diet, and she felt very miserable. So she went to see Peabody to ask him to weigh her. Mm, well done, Pippa, he said. You've lost three buttons worth of weight. That really is very good. Pippa was delighted. Just then, Adam Avocado came along. Well done, Pippa. Come to my house. I've got a surprise for you. Some of the Munch Bunch had prepared a party, specially for Pippa. We know it's been very difficult for you to diet, especially with everyone trying to tempt you, said Adam. But we're all very proud that you have managed to stick to it for two whole weeks. Well, I suppose I could have just one day off my diet, said Pippa. Pippa was happier than she'd been for a long time. But I'll be back on that diet again tomorrow, she said. The Munch Bunch, munch bunch. have run away. The Munch Bunch, munch bunch. are here to stay. The Munch Bunch, munch bunch. have found Settle 